Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Kate. I am in the SAV. Kim out of Savannah, Georgia. Getting this walk in right quick before the sun goes down. Um, and I just wanted to jump on here and um, talk to you guys about. Oh my gosh, I lost so much sleep the other night because whew, this YouTube interview that I listened to just had me. Mm, it it just grabbed me. I could not sleep until I finished it. It was amazing. And um, the interview was with a guy who was like multi-millionaire. Or maybe he was a billionaire. I can't remember. It's all just zeros, right? But he had a lot of money. And he made his money in real estate and by investing in real estate and luxury cars. But the thing that was super impressive about this gentleman was not his portfolio, but his humble beginnings. The gentleman was Iranian. And he talked about how at 14 years old and I had to tell my son about this last year last night because my son was thinking he had it so hard and I had to tell him about people that really have it hard in other parts of the world and so this Iranian gentleman told the story about how at 14 years old his whole entire family flew Iran because um, he was going to bed and they were at war so I know in some communities, you know, gunshots, that is a normal sound. But with this gentleman, it was bombs. Like, they were at war. And that was what he went to sleep to every single night. Bombs dropping. Death was his reality as a young child. And so at 14, at that time, um, the minute a child, a young boy turned 14, I mean in Iran at that time, the minute a young boy turned 14, he was drafted into the army and because his father didn't want him toting a rifle or you know whatever machinery they have over there because his family didn't want him toting any type of you know weapons and and possibly dying they all flew to the they all fled to the United States now here is the thing y'all he has six family members six one of which was his 6 month old um, I was about to say daughter. No, he was 14. So it wasn't his daughter. It was his six month old sister. Do you know that all six family members, including a six month old baby lived in a car? They lived in a car after fleeing to America from Iran because they didn't want their 14 year old son to be put into the army. Now that's a struggle. I was in Walmart last night and I saw this cap and it said the struggle is real and it was embellished in glitter and I thought oh look at how pretty they made this curse. So many people speak curses upon themselves. They wear curses on their shirt or they, they subscribe to the philosophies of other people that the struggle is real but here in America we really don't know about struggle. <laughs> I mean even the poorest people if you ask them what their predicaments are their situation is like somebody in another country would die to have that situation so going back to this interview the gentleman was telling how his family um all six of them slept in the car and he said that his first job was at kmart making three dollars and 25 cents an hour three dollars and 25 cents an hour of course he started working at a very early age now here's the thing that's so amazing about this young man do you know by the time he was 19 years old he saved 20 thousand dollars and he made that twenty thousand dollars in three dollar and twenty five cents increments y'all please listen to me when i tell you if you're sitting up here talking about the struggle is real in america you don't know struggle you don't know struggle so he has he's 19 years old with twenty thousand dollars what do you think he does with it do you think he goes by and buys another car do you think he goes shopping do you think he uh goes to the outlet no, absolutely not. You know what he did? His family, his, his father had a friend. And his father's friend said, um, hey, listen, there's a gas station for sale. Um, why don't y'all get it? And because, see, y'all don't understand. People come to America and they have an American dream. The American dream is usually not for most Americans. It's for other people because other people recognize, what do they say? Familiarity breeds contempt, right? So there are so many people in America and they don't recognize the opportunities that we have here in America because they're so used to it that they become immune to it. But let me tell you something. People that come from other countries, oh, they recognize. So when his father's friend told him, hey, listen, there's a gas station. I think y'all can get that for the 20000 That's what he did. He took his whole $20,000 at age 19 years, 19 years old. It took him three. He, he made it in $3.25 increments. Remember, that's what Kmart was paying him. And he took the whole $20,000, turned it over to his father's friend. Do you know he lost it? 
something didn't work out with the deal and he didn't get one penny of his money back penny that he works money 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 that he worked his fingers to the bone for now most people at that time would just give up i know people who lose fifty dollars and they add oh, oh, oh i'm gonna get my fifty somebody gonna give me my fifty dollars somebody gonna really really now i understand every dollar counts but some of y'all that would have just been the end of it but this young man lost twenty thousand dollars that he worked so very hard for and do you know what he did he got right back on that entrepreneurship course because he said what else was he was going to do he saw how hard it took him to make that twenty thousand dollars to save that up and he knew that there was a better way here he just had to find the right vehicle so if if the gas station route was not the right vehicle if that deal fell through it was not going to stop this man from continuing to become financially free in this land of the free for not just him but also his family you got to understand you got to peep the mindset of other people that come over here okay it's totally different than most americans so what does the guy do he then later on, he had a, a, a series of businesses, but later on, he and a friend opened up this Mexican um, tienda, supermercado, like a um, grocery store. And they build this grocery store up to the point where they are making $30,000 a month, right? So woohoo, they're making $30,000 a month. But guys, let me tell you something. The only thing that is um, guaranteed is change. So they're making $30,000 a month with this Mexican grocery store. And what do you know? Another big chain Mexican grocery store opens up in their area and takes their business. Their revenues and profits start dropping, dropping, dropping. And he finds himself upside down again in a situation where he's like, oh, crap. Now, that business flopped. But he ended up selling it and getting up from underneath it. And then he went into brokering, okay? He went into real estate because he heard somebody say there was a lot of money in real estate. So he was like, well, let me see about that. In his early 20s, he became a broker, made a lot of money in real estate, has since accumulated a portfolio of, I think, it's seven to eight hundred million dollars at the time. And then later on, went into luxury vehicles. Now, why am I telling you guys this? I'm telling you guys this because this man went from Kmart to almost buying a gas station to uh, grocery stores to owning a grocery store, to getting involved in real estate. His path was all over the place. See, you guys, and, and, and I remember the interviewer asked him, he said, what would you say to somebody or what would you say to the younger version of you who is disenchanted when things go wrong? He said, I would tell them just stay the course and you don't know where the course may go, but stay the course. Guys, I speak to so many people and they want me to tell them like I'm Miss Cleo or something. They want me to tell them exactly when they're gonna get rich how they're going to be rich, how long it's going to take. I don't know the answer to that because you don't know the answer to that. No one knows the answer to that. And guess what? If you knew the answer to that, it would probably scare the bricks off of you. So stop it. All you have to do is take the first step in faith and stay the course and be persistent and be consistent and realize and recognize that what you're doing currently is not working. So you may as well continue to look for the answer when I say this interview just uh, oh gosh it kept me from my slumber and it was oh so worth it and I, I'm telling y'all I see so many people who talk about people that are not Americans like they don't belong here they don't this they don't that and it, it's really just to me it's jealousy because I see a lot of people upper uh, capitalizing on the opportunities that Americans ignore and that's nobody's fault but Americans. And, and I am an American in case in case you don't know. Some people do not. Um, so I feel like I'm, since I'm American, I can speak on it. But my son's father is not American. And I remember one of the first things that attracted me to him was looking at my country through his eyes. He comes from the island of Trinidad. And I remember, I thought it was funny, but later on I really thought about what he said. And it... it made me pause for the cause because he said, I remember when I came to America, I can't believe, he said, and I, in Trinidad, we would have peanut butter or je jelly. He said, but when I got here and they were like, do you want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? He said, he was like, and jelly? I can have both? <laughs> and look at that, peanut butter and jelly, that is a, that's a sandwich that poor people eat. Now, I love me a good peanut butter and jelly sandwich, don't get offended. But that is a sandwich that 
typically like you know it's not at the top of most people's list that's like your go-to emergency food in america but for him it was a luxury simply because we were having the peanut butter and the jelly together and when i saw my country when I saw things that I took for granted through his eyes, it gave me a greater appreciation for what had been under my nose all this time. All this time. So my point is this, y'all. Um, you got to listen to other people's stories. You've got to listen to other people from different cultures. You've got to listen to other people who are where you want to be and ask them what path did it take for them to get there. Gail is on here. Hey, Gail. And it's so funny because in my Square Store course, I, I posted my setup for printing out my postage from home. And I'm just all about automation and keeping things simple. I got into my business to have time freedom. So whatever I can do to buy back my time, that's what I'm going to do. And Gail commented on that picture and she said, girl, you got this thing all figured out. And, I, and, and, and the setup is like, has a laptop it has a postage only printer thermal printer and uh my digital scale it's it's, it's a little setup no no it no something something it's a little something something right but i told i told gail i commented under her comment about girl you got this thing all laid out i told her i said girl it wasn't that long ago it wasn't that long ago that all i had was a 250 dollar laptop like we're talking a year ago all I had was a $250 laptop. There was none of what you see in this picture right now. So everything big once started out small and you cannot despise small beginnings. But I'm telling you right now, if you start the if you start today and you keep going, you will not regret it and it will surely pay off. The best time to start was yesterday. But the next best time is today. And so if you've ever seen one of my videos, if you've ever seen one of my posts and you're like, "How does Kim do that?" Let me tell y'all something. <laughs> My story has not been easy either. But all things considered, um, I don't think, I'm not going to declare and decree that, you know, the struggle is real for me. Absolutely not. I've been extremely blessed. I've been able to piggyback off of the the experience and the errors of others. I've plugged into the right people. I've quickly unplugged from the wrong people. I've learned who I am so that I can learn who I was put here to serve. And I am constantly, every single day, working on making incremental improvements. Listen to me now. I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm just working at making incremental improvements. I don't have to know how. I don't have to know when I'm going to get my mansion or how it's all going to happen. No, all I have to do is every single day, every single day, and every single way, try to get better, just a little bit better. If I become a better, a, a better what, Kim? A better person. If I become a better person in general, then I will be a better mother. I'll be a better sister. I'll be a better um, daughter. I'll be a better wife to my future husband. I'll be a better everything by default, just by becoming a better person just by doing what I say I'm going to do and apologizing when I don't and following through. That is how things work out. Now, if you want the specifics, again, I'm not a, a fortune teller. I can't tell you that. And if you're relying on that, then you just don't get it. Because every single time that somebody gets to the final destination, they will tell you, oh my God, oh my goodness, if, I, if you could have told me that this is what I would have had to do to get to this place, I don't know if I would have necessarily taken the journey. So guess what? The fact that you don't know, huh, that's for your protection. Oh yes, baby, that's your protection. Because if you knew, you probably wouldn't do all of that, right? How many people are divorced now? And if they knew when they said I do, what was about to happen? <laughs> I just got, I got to give y'all an analogy. I got to give y'all an analogy so y'all see where I'm going with this, right? So, you know, you just got to realize that, guys. And you got to realize the question is not how is it going to work out. The question is, am I happy where I currently am? And do I want to be in this position another five months, five years, five decades from now? Seriously. Because some of y'all going to live a long life, longer than you expect. And you do not want to have all these years and be in the same financial standing that you are right now. So do what you need to do to get it done. And, and, and you take the first step in faith and let God handle the rest. If you want to know the interview that I'm talking about, just let me know and I'll send you the link. It was absolutely amazing. And every single um, interview um, 
from that particular YouTube channel again. After that, I watched the uh, the story of the guy who invented hot Cheetos. <laughs> Do y'all know the guy who invented Hot Cheetos only had a fourth grade education and he was a janitor at Fritos? He was a janitor and he invented Hot Cheetos. Tell me, talk about started from the bottom, now we here. Hey, hey, started from the bottom, now my whole team here. Oh, go Hot Cheetos guy. A Mexican man. I was like, yes, Chico. Anyway, guys, this has been long enough. It's getting dark. Thank you for walking and talking with me. I'm in my bounce boots getting my steps in. What did you do today? 30, 33, baby. 30 minutes, 30 days, three products. What products? Reach out to me. I'll tell you how to pay me for them. <laughs> Listen, if this is your first time watching my YouTube video, um, hit the subscribe button. And also the bell to the right. Gail is laughing at me. <laughs> Girl, you know I ain't scared to take no money. I ain't scared to talk no more. <laughs> but um, hit that bell to the right, ding dong. So every time I upload a video, you'll be the first to know. And I'll see you in the next one. Now I gotta go. Bye, y'all.